Hey guys, Gong Rong Zong here, hope you're doing great. Ever wondered if the upcoming release of Classic WoW will be for you? Is all the hype real, or is it just nostalgia that's been blown out of proportion? As someone who's personally played Vanilla WoW, it's my hope that I'll be able to answer that question for you today, and whether or not it should be a game that you'll want to eagerly look forward to. Just as a caveat, all the information here is based on what WoW was like 14 years ago. But as Blizzard has explicitly stated that there will only be the most minimal of changes to the playstyle, it's very likely that these main features will carry through to Classic. As I personally possess no vanilla footage, some of the clips here that I'm going to use are from other YouTube channels that have marvelously recorded their original vanilla playing experience. All credit goes to them, so be sure to visit their videos and give them a big thumbs up for helping to preserve gaming history. With that said, let's get straight into it. The first feature for you to consider is that the grinds were very long. Very, very long, especially in comparison to the current levels of grind we have in WoW today. Years ago, this grind was obviously compounded with the fact that there were very few guides written about anything at all, from leveling to farming to how to tackle dungeons and raids. Nevertheless, the quantitative amount of time you had to put into your character to achieve a similar level of progression as compared to today was many times higher. For example, let's talk about leveling. When we speak about leveling a character from 1 to 120 today, or till 110 for the Allied Racer's Heritage Armor, we usually speak in terms of hours, with the total often amounting to a few dozen at most. In comparison, it was normal for leveling to take days in terms of time slash played, just to level a character from 1 to 60. Personally, my original vanilla paladin took about 20 days of slash played just to get to 60. Again, this is not if you follow some sort of speed leveling guide, but progressed at a normal pace through all the relevant zones, quests, and dungeons. This is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just a very, very different experience altogether, where the journey was as much of an experience as the end game. What about gear drops? There has been much frustration over the way Azerite armor has been handled in BFA, coupled with the over-the-top RNG mechanics that have been carried over from Legion. Well, realistically speaking, the rate of gear drops in Classic is actually going to be relatively slower than today. And that's even without the copious amounts of war and titan forging. Endgame dungeons could be farmed for a few weeks, depending on how much you played per day of course, before you ever got the item you wanted to drop. This was made significantly worse in raids, whereby each boss could often only drop 2 to 3 items at most, with a raid group comprising of 40 players. To compound upon this, dungeons and raids took significantly longer than they do compared to today, with dungeons taking anywhere from up to 2 hours, and raids lasting much longer than that. Lastly, there were also no reroll tokens for extra chances. You attended a raid for a few weeks, several times a week, building up your DKP high enough to bid for one epic item, and that was your singular reward for all that effort. Again, this is not necessarily a bad thing, but just a very different type and speed of progression. Finally, what about gold? Was money easy to acquire in Classic WoW? Long story short, not really, it wasn't. There were no mission tables or side missions that you could do to help you obtain gold. Obtaining gold was entirely dependent on the amount of time you put into farming, your knowledge of the economy, and what was in supply or demand. It was common for people to mindlessly kill low-level mobs that had a chance of dropping a rare pet for weeks on end, as it was one of the few viable ways to make gold in Classic WoW. For example, one common tactic was to farm and kill the red dragon whelps in the wetlands in the thousands in order for a red dragon whelp pet to drop, a novelty item that was extremely rare back in Classic. Another example would be the camping of rare mobs for days on end, one of which was Voltros in Westfall, as it had a chance to drop a rare low-level dagger that could sell for very high. Remember, back in Classic WoW, rare mobs spawned on a very long timer, anywhere from hours to days, in contrast to the rare star mobs that respawn like regular mobs in WoW today. What about professions? 
Well, professions were extremely unbalanced in terms of gold making, an ironic mirror of how they are now in BFA. Professions such as blacksmithing and leatherworking could make some money, as gear was always in demand, and there were specific crafted pieces that could outweigh gear that dropped. However, professions like alchemy or engineering made very little, with engineering often actually resulting in a huge net loss of money. This was due to the fact that very few consumables were required for raiding, if any at all. There were no potions that could be used to boost DPS, no flasks, and food meant very little in PvE, especially when you could buy most of what you needed from a food vendor. Nevertheless, it is important to state that many of the plans and materials that were required for endgame recipes for blacksmithing and leatherworking came from very difficult open world mobs or only dropped in raids. And obviously, due to supply and demand, these were the items that sold well. One example would be the core hound armor that leather workers could make. This armor was extremely desirable for Molten Core, as he had an excellent amount of fire resistance attached to the pieces. However, the caveat was that Core Leather could only be skinned from the Core Hounds in Molten Core itself, considering the fact that there were only a handful of Core Hounds present in Molten Core, and that there were many skinners in the 40-man raid eager to get their hands on the Core Hounds when they died, getting priority in your guild as the designated skinner for the leather was a challenge in itself, much less having enough to actually sell on the auction house. Another example would be the oh so awesome feared Arcanite Reaper that not only took a huge amount of Arcanite to craft, a material that had to be transmuted on a 24 hour cooldown by alchemists, but also of which the recipe had a pretty low drop rate from a boss in Lower Black Rock Spire, an endgame dungeon. To make matters even worse, this NPC was a rare spawn that you had no way at level 60 of ever detecting at the entrance of the dungeon. So you had to clear a substantial part of the dungeon before even knowing whether or not he had spawned within. Allow me to round it up by putting it this way. There are many people that have tried and are still trying to farm this guy for this recipe years and years down the road from vanilla. Level 80s, 90s, 100s that can waltz into a dungeon and one-shot everything. And they are still unsuccessful at getting the plans. Finally, we cannot go through a section about classic grinding without covering reputations. In order to reach Exalted with some of the more desirable factions, it could take hours upon hours of cumulative time either killing thousands of mobs over and over again or doing dailies until your brains blew out. One example of this would be the reputation with the Timberball Hold, the Furbox of Felwood. After completing some initial quests, one had to spend a significant amount of time killing thousands of these guys. And these guys in classic were low level 50s, taking a substantial amount of time for a level 60 to kill one by one. How long it took in terms of actual days was dependent on your playtime, but make no mistake, you were sure to expend a good amount of your sanity performing genocide on these poor furbogs. And if you thought time gating was terrible in BFA, wait until you hear about the Winter Spring Frost Saber mount. In order to obtain this beautiful alliance exclusive mount, you had to reach Exalted with its respective faction, the Winter Spring Trainers. Available to you were three daily quests that each gave a measly 50 to 75 reputation points each. So you could imagine just how long it took to get the tens of thousands needed for Exalted. Not only that, but Winter Spring was also an endgame zone, with many of the mobs being high level 50s. In one of the three quests, you even had to kill level 60 elite frost giants, which were often too difficult to solo, leaving you with only about 100 plus reputation points a day. So in a nutshell, the grind in vanilla for almost anything was very long, relative to today. There was no going around it. Every bit of progress that you had in vanilla had to be worked for. Nevertheless, as I stated before, this is not in any way a bad thing, and in fact could be a very refreshing change from the current pace of WoW, where the end result is currently way more important than the journey. In line with the theme of long grinds, I think it's important for us to consider that there were no catch-up mechanics in place for gear. None whatsoever. The release of every raid tier, 
Molten Core to Blackwing Lair to AQ to Nax Ramas only meant that the gear gap between the more hardcore raiders and the average player got bigger and bigger and bigger. LFR was not a thing, and world quests were not a thing. They never existed. You could not level a new level 60 and immediately jump into Blackwing Lair, for example, just because the new raid tier had been recently released, a stark contrast to the way WoW operates today. You had to go through the same gearing route that every level 60 had to go through, doing endgame dungeons, getting some gear for Molten Core, and then finally be prepared for Blackwing Lair. There were no shortcuts, and this could be quite a bummer for some of you guys out there, as you might feel penalised just because you didn't play Classic regularly since its release. Unfortunately, that was the way that WoW was originally designed. Vanilla raids were not designed to be accessed or experienced by every player. They were specifically designed to only be experienced by endgame guilds or groups that were focused on raid progression. In addition to this, let's not forget that PvP templates did not exist in Classic WoW. If you were to jump into a battleground as a fresh level 60 equipped in lower level greens, you were going to be utterly destroyed. And you can imagine how bad it got when endgame PvE raiders were absolutely wrecking everyone's face left, right and center with their Dragon Slayer weapons. So when you combine these points together, depending on what kind of experience you're hoping to get out of Classic, you may want to reconsider whether Classic WoW is something you want to get into if you're in it just to play casually. As the grinds are long, the gaps between the hardcore and casual players will only get larger and larger, and it will be highly unlikely that you get to experience the raiding atmosphere in any significant capacity. This will be a recurring theme throughout this video, but I felt it beneficial to state it at this stage. Nevertheless, the next two points should help to shed even more light on this. So let's keep going. Next up on number 3, we come to how class balance was back in vanilla. And boy, if you thought class balance was bad in BFA, which it is, it was atrocious in classic. There were several specs that were literally unplayable in any endgame context or raids. If you were ever a hybrid, a shaman, a druid, or a paladin, the only viable spec you could use was their healing specs. End of story. There was simply no further discussion of this because of how large the gap was between all their other specs. For example, the only viable endgame tank was the Protection Warrior. Protection Paladins and Pharaoh Bearform Druids couldn't hold a candle to them. Similarly, the best endgame DPSers were those of the pure DPS class. Rogues, Hunters, and Mages for example. Retribution Paladins, Enhancement Shamans, and Balanced Druids fell far, far behind. This conundrum was made even worse with how the tier set bonuses were designed. Tier sets did not change when you changed specs, and for hybrids, most of them were designed either in, you guessed it, a hybrid sort of way, or outrightly gave hybrids full-on healing bonuses. These restrictions effectively gimped the hybrid class in any attempt to play a role other than healing, which was a terrible experience for hybrids in any raiding capacity. The big but, however, the giant caveat to all of this, is that the spec imbalances gave each spec a much clearer identity. And hybrids were actually hybrids. They were the only specs that could heal and DPS at the same time. Sure, their DPS and heals wasn't as strong as a pure DPS or healing spec, but it was more than reasonable enough for solo play and dungeons. The dynamics of raiding demanded that every player fulfilled a specific role, for the sake of both simplicity and effectiveness. But outside of the chaos of 40-man raids, it was mostly up to the creativity of the 5 members of a party in how they wanted to tackle each dungeon encounter. For example, Perhaps if you had an Enhancement Shaman in the team, he could whip out his shield to help to off-tank a large ad, while the rest of the party dealt with the boss. Or if you had a Holy Paladin, he was more than capable of dishing out Holy Shocks as a DPS spell if the party did not require heals at that moment. Long story short, it felt great to play a hybrid within dungeons. You brought a great amount of utility, heals, and DPS exactly what a hybrid was supposed to be. 
Alas, of course, class and spec identity have mostly homogenized into an unrecognizable mess in WoW today. There is mostly only melee DPS and ranged DPS, with minor differences in between. So if you're someone that can't wait to be immersed in what was a much purer form of class fantasy, Classic WoW may be a good choice for you. Beware though, that unless Blizzard comes in with some major tweaking, it is unlikely that hybrids will be great at doing anything in raids besides healing. Now we come to number 4. Some of you may already know this, and it may be a pretty simple point to put forth, but I felt it was important enough to warrant a short section on its own. There is no transmog system in Classic. I repeat, none whatsoever. We don't know yet if Blizzard might choose to implement this. I hope they do though. I don't personally see it affecting gameplay or the experience of vanilla that much. But as it stands in the original version, you had to wear whatever crappy mismatch of gear that you found, often making yourself look like a clown. Don't get me wrong, this really had its own charm and flair to it. A nice hark back to old school single player RPGs where you kinda looked like a severe bad hair day until you got your set items but just be aware that it probably won't exist. So for all you transmog hunters out there, this might be a drawback for you. Finally, we come to number 5. In line with what was previously hinted at, Vanilla WoW was a game that placed quite a lot of emphasis on the community aspect of play towards the end game, the MMO part of the MMORPG. Unlike today, there was very little to do in the game solo when you reached max level. There weren't any pet battles, there weren't any fishing quests, there was no archaeology, there were no transmog systems as we just covered, the high-end profession recipes were gated behind raids and dungeons, and you needed some level of PvE gear in order to perform well in random battlegrounds. This however, is not so much a lack of content as it is more a shift. In vanilla WoW, the journey meant much more than the end goal, and so the entire experience of leveling a new character through all the zones was the bulk of the gameplay itself for solo and casual players. I myself spent most of my time just leveling through the zones, making alts and learning new classes. The rest of the time was spent with a small guild doing dungeons together. It truly felt like an RPG that was online, rather than an item level game, or a DPS counter game, or an RNG game, you get my point. So just be aware that it isn't so much of a games carnival like WoW today, where there's a million different things to do if you were playing solo and bored. For solo and casual play, there was just the leveling of your characters. In a nutshell, bringing all 5 points together, Classic WoW is a game where the leveling experience was much more fulfilling, but much longer. The structures and systems in Classic were bare bones. There was no group finder, no transmog, no catch-up mechanics, no cross-realm servers, and so on. It was just you, your character, and how immersed you were in the class fantasy. Many things were very broken, but many things were also right in their own simplistic ways. My take on it would be that the ideal way to enjoy Classic WoW would be with a small group of laid-back friends that just want to enjoy the journey together. Progression in raids is not the be-all and all of Classic WoW, and should be treated as such. Solo play can be enjoyable, but nowhere near as enjoyable when delving into Classic Dungeons with a group of friends or guildmates. If you do decide to play Classic though, I might just see you in-game, as I'll definitely be giving it a try myself. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in Azeroth.